Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We are headed down to Travis's place to pick up the cattle trailer because I want to sell the remaining steers that I have in the pole shed. So I was thinking about keeping some of my steers back to feed out. I just decided that I'm going to go ahead and sell them all, um, mostly because of the way that cattle prices are right now. And I have a little bit more prep to do before I actually start raising any fat steers uh, if I choose to go that route. So for now, uh, I'd like to sell off these steers. Um, I'm gonna have a lot more steers next year and even more after that. So I'm a little bit concerned about having enough uh, corn storage to be able to do this in the next two years. Um, so uh, before I start fattening steers out, I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna have to build another uh, bin to, or a bin to store corn in. And then I'm thinking Travis can probably use the one that I'm using now, or Dad can start using it again. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I'd like to get these guys up and gone so I can start focusing on the 23 calf season, or 24 season. And uh, let's head down, pick up the trailer. We're going to be loading these steers up. Hopefully we can do it as less, least stressful as possible. Um, loading cattle up is one of those jobs that's... I don't really consider very much fun just because so many things can go wrong. So um, usually at the end of the day, you're feeling a lot better. We got my 14 steers hauled to Bloomington, so I'll keep you guys posted at the end of this video how they sell. Uh, for this afternoon, since we have people coming to work on our pole shed out there because the a couple of the posts are rotted off and we don't want an incident like we had um, with, the, uh, with the pole barn out here, is we wanna have some of the posts replaced in the pole shed. So I wanna go out uh, take the spreader out and clean up the pole shed. There's not a lot of manure out in there. It's probably going to be one, maybe two loads. We're going to take it out to the Klein pasture, spread it out lightly, and then uh, that's going to be it for today. And then I'll, at the end of this video, I'll keep you guys updated on how they sold. So fingers crossed. I'm hoping for anything over $2 a pound for the steers, but they're a little bit on the larger side. So um, we'll see. a little flat.
just got the corner of the pole shed fixed up and I'm gonna scoop some dirt back up, cover these boards up, try to level the ground back out. While they were here, we had two by sixes and we had them put a barrier to try to defend the tin on the other side of the wall. I am not crazy that they put the bottom board down literally on the ground, but uh, I would have preferred it to be up one more step. But I think having that in here is gonna help a lot when we're working cows in here. But uh, the goal was to reinforce the corners. You can see the posts and what they did back in there. This was a big one. This one wasn't even touching the ground. So I'm gonna dump the dirt on the other side of the wall there. And then that way in the winter, it'll really help with the wind that's blowing in through there, to keep the rain and the snow out of this corner. I just spread out what little bit of dirt pile we had here back to where it was needed. I might do a little bit more grading, but I kind of wanted to do that quick just before the rain. Oh, okay, before the rain started. <laughs> I'm starting to see some pretty crazy sky static, but uh, I covered up a good portion of this corner. I know what actually caused this was the fact that the gutter dumps out right onto this corner. So I might have some pipe that I might be able to hook up to that and throw some screws in it and divert the water away from the corner here. That would probably be huge to help stop that from happening again. Um, I need to come along here and kind of push some more of this dirt back up, but um, we'll see what the rain does. It might erode a little bit here. I might have to push some of this back up tomorrow. Looks pretty good, I'd say. I better get going inside. Roughly two months ago, Dad got Richie Waters for the pole shed and the barnyard. So today's the day we decided we're going to be changing out the old ones. I don't know how old the one is in the pole shed. That actually, I think, came from down at Travis's. But the one down in the barnyard, the last time I asked Dad, he said that it was on the farm since grandpa bought the place, which was in the 80s, and it looked extremely used then. So uh, looking at that thing, it, my guess is it's probably like from the 60s. So they're pretty good. They've been working this long, but it's time to change them out. Loosen that plant down there now. Okay, turn the water on. One sixteen twenty two. Huh, manufacturing date. Rocket and I are headed over to the farm because we need to send out the last load of corn out of the twenty thousand bushel grain bins. So we're down to the last load that's coming out of those two bins and it's come up time to do the final sweep. We positioned the power sweep over the auger drain holes so that next year when we're draining it, it drains off over this first so then it can get started. That's the reason behind the positioning. I've been playing around with pushing it back a little bit more to help the uh, corn flow through because you get a year where you get some warm corn, as in it's heated. Uh, we have had to climb in here and uh, try to beat it through over this auger and it's not very fun. So if it's positioned off to the side, it can help it drain just a little bit. On to the next bin. So 
this is about how much corn that the suka bin left behind on the first pass. I mean, it's pretty well up to my first knuckle there. So, on the second pass, it picks all that up across the bin and it does a much better job. This bin, especially. So, there's some debate uh, in previous videos on this topic about whether it's better to uh, hop in and sweep behind the power sweep with like a shovel and throw it ahead of it between each load. And the theory behind the power sweep is that you shouldn't have to get in but, uh, on when you're loading each load. And by having the power sweep in here and letting it run all the way around, it can pick up most of this excess corn on the second or third pass. This will be down to where it's just one layer of, one layer of kernels thick. And that way, all we really need as a tool is a, is a sweep instead of using a shovel. Except for maybe around the outside, it's easier to scoop it in. Personally, I just feel like it's safer because if you're loading by yourself, you don't have to hop in here on every load and scoop behind it. And at the end, for the amount of time that it takes for us to sweep these out, especially with Travis, I mean, even by myself, it takes 30 minutes to sweep both bins out but with two of us, it takes no time at all. This power sweep actually pulls the corn in around the outside of the bin a lot better because it's got this wheel that doubles it in. That's a genius design, it really is. Now that we have my steers sold, I have the corn left in the feed bin that I would like to sell. Travis asked if I wanted to just leave it in there. Um, I, however, I, I don't really care to leave old crop corn in the bin because over time, uh, I don't want it to really just sit in the bin. I like completely cleaning it out every year, letting it sit empty for a month at least. And uh, that way, if we need to go through and spray it down for bugs, we can, instead of just leaving the corn in the bin. So we're gonna head over to the farm and uh, we're gonna hook the auger up, set it up to the feed bin and start unloading it. So I've got surgery tomorrow, which is why we're doing this today, because the doctor says that, oh my coffee. I'll be on like a 10 pound weight limit for at least two weeks and then I won't, be considered fully recovered until six to eight weeks, he said, which is putting us right at harvest. Uh, my personal physician says that by harvest, I'll be back to normal. And um, so I've been trying to do things the last couple of weeks to try to square up some projects that needed to get done before harvest. And um, I got the truck all ready to go for harvest. The oil's changed in it and um, we got the coolant pretty well figured out still leaks everything but uh, not nearly as bad as it was the truck was sitting here for like what a month and I only lost maybe a, less than a quart of coolant which over that amount of time was really really good for this thing so the same day I found out that I needed surgery I called up Keeler service center because I think the reason I need to have surgery in the first place is because well, the doors on the truck you guys if you've been watching for a while uh, you'll have seen me struggle to open these things where I literally have to put my whole weight on them just to crank them open so 
same day I found out, I called up Keeler Service Center and uh, I took the truck down that same day. And I just got it back last week. Um, I had to stand on the doors before. I'll show you what I gotta do to open them now. Much, much easier. I'll show you what they did. So the problem that happens with these doors, this is an older style door where it really doesn't have any kind of support to help open it. Um, newer ones might have ratchet straps or something. Um, these doors are an older style. Got some corn growing down here. And uh, down underneath, it looks a lot cleaner. So. This is a commodity hopper trailer, which is more intended for hauling fertilizer. And I can't say for sure what it's all been used to haul for. Um, I think the guy before me hauled corn, but I'm sure at some point this thing has seen fertilizer. So what happens is that over time, these support bars across the door start to rust out. And you'll see they cleaned them up, put new rivets in them, and that reduced the clearance of the door as it goes underneath the hopper. So essentially what was happening is the corrosion was causing the door to swell up and it was putting pressure on the top and the bottom of the rail and making it very difficult to open. So um, for years I helped it with WD-40 and um, that worked great but you had to use a lot of it. Uh, now I really don't have to do anything more than grease it. They changed out the U-joints and put greasable U-joints um, down here, as you can see. So much, much better. Um, that was something that I should have done a lot sooner. Uh, $2,500 well worth spent. And uh, I have a lot more confidence in running this trailer now. I mean, I think the traps were the biggest issue this trailer had. And, I only paid $15,000 for this trailer with how inflation's gone and everything. This trailer's worth at least 25, if not 30 now. They say these commodity hoppers are pretty well sought after because they're larger than an ag hopper trailer. They have taller sides and they're uh, a lot deeper. Uh, however, for someone like me, it's not quite so great because I still can't haul all that much more crop being is that I have to go across the way scale as much as I do and you know stay legal like I always am um, yeah that's I, I would love to get a ag hopper trailer because it would uh, sit higher up off the ground and then maybe just maybe I could make it up into the field at down at Travis's place uh, we've seen uh, in the past the truckers have made it up into the field um, however with this one we've been afraid I've been afraid to try it because I'm worried that I would get hung up because of how low the doors sit. So I'm gonna pull this over and we are gonna start loading it up. See how easy this is? Yeah, how did that not get? <laughs> we cleaned out the auger the last time we used it completely. And uh, we always run it before we start it because, you know, birds and stuff always build nests up in there. And we ran it, fresh corn came out of the auger. And then the black stuff that was down here came out. So we thought we were good. Pulled the truck underneath it, started to back up. And now two different nests have come out into the into the hopper so he's open opening it up again to get all the nests out I'm hoping there's at least a thousand bushels in here usually I have about 1200 left I'd like to keep my steers longer and sell them as fats instead of feeders but I was concerned about how far the corn would go.
50% easier to open and close. I'd say without any weight of the corn on it, that was a lot easier, but with all that weight on there, that's still pretty hard, but it's not anything like it was. Yeah. Got 1,075 bushels on, all on 80,000 pounds. I mean, we were 80,000 exactly. Man, I don't know how that works. 5,837 in the quarter. It's almost $6,000. I received the check for my steers, and let me just preface this with saying that I've never been very good at looking at an animal and going, yep, that sucker's 700, 800, 1,000 pounds. <laughs> Uh, I honestly did not think that my steers were quite this heavy. At most, I was thinking like 950, and turns out that's closer to the lower range of what I actually had. But um, overall, I am still very happy with how they sold. Um, like I said, I had expected them for self to sell for a higher price, but their weight was higher to compensate which I'm fine with. And looking back on it, hindsight's always 2020. I'm I could have finished out these steers uh and sold them as finished. But uh I'm still okay with the choice that I made to sell them off. I'm still happy with how they sold and everything. Uh but this would have been a good year to do it, I think, just with the amount of feed that I had left in the bin and uh what their weights were. As you can see that nine of them averaged 1100 pounds and another 200 and they'd have been they'd have been pretty well set so overall um finishing them in the future is something that i'm looking forward to uh, my average per head this year is even higher than it was last year so last year's average per head was a thousand and ninety so needless to say that they sold for much better although Price-wise, this year they were still higher. Um, last year, they averaged anywhere between 601 and 840. But I had also sold them three months earlier. So, held on to them longer. And um, that's something I think I want to want to keep doing is just holding on to them for as long as I can. Every year for the last three years, my average per head has been increasing. Um, this year, that's honestly do just because I held on to them for longer, but I don't really mind holding on to them longer to feed them out. So without further ado, that pretty much wraps up this very long video. And um, I'll keep you guys posted as we head into harvest. I've got a few more videos coming out uh, before we start harvesting. We still have our final cut of hay to do. So stay tuned for that. I am excited because we're gonna be making some silage bales that are gonna be cut. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that quality looks when I pull them out of the tube. So something to keep an eye out for and uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. All Hot Farms work and with that I'll see you next time.